today we will be continuing with the topic regarding solid rocket propellant motors in the previous class what you have covered or basically propellant com composition what are the what do you mean by a solid rocket motor what are its components in what way they will be manufactured now in today's class we will be continuing with the previous that is propellant composition particularly additives right what happened in the previous class we studied regarding fuel plus oxidizer are combined to form a solid state paste which is in turn put or embedded into the casing of solid rocket motor to form a solid propellant right now the same solid propellant if we are adding excessive amounts or some minor amounts to enhance the performance of additives particularly aluminium or few other items to enhance the overall combustion properties or overall performance of a solid rocket motor then that would be called as a heterogeneous propellant right previously it was my homogeneous right what happens under homogeneous basically you will be having fuel and oxidizer with a binder that because that in order to maintain the cohesiveness or adhesiveness between the propellant and the casing you will be using binder now in case of heterogeneous propellant the oxidant is the main constituent by mass and a binder which is usually polybutadiene rubber and a hydrocarbon which is a fuel aluminum which is also present at 60 to 18 percent and other materials which are being added to improve performance or safety carbon is present to render the propellant opaque and to infrared radiation so that propellant cannot be internally ignited by heat that is being radiated through the bulk material of the burning surface it produces a characteristic black color plasticizers are few of the additives that are added to improve the molding and extrusion of material what happens in case of solid rocket propellant motors we will be creating a solid rocket motor paste and mounting it or molding it according to the shape of my grain or burning area right so in order to have let's say in order to have the ability for the paste or the mold or the oxidative propellant mixture to form certain shapes we will be using plasticizers what does they do they improve your molding capabilities or and extrude the material in a certain shapes as on what we require and other materials such as inorganic salts are also added to control burning and to achieve desirable value of pressure burning rate index which is denoted by beta and this is necessary so, so called double base propellants those contain mainly nitroglycerin as well as nitrocellulose and for heterogeneous propellants the oxidants themselves act in this way the iron oxide fio3 is added about 1% level to assist smooth combustion and waxes are also added for some propellants to lubricate the extrusion at an optimum composition for a main constituents the additives are included to produce stability storage qualities and mechanical strength which is the whole mass of propellant which is sometimes the biggest single mass of the whole vehicle for example a single ariane 5 booster which weighs around 260 tons that has to be accelerated by the thrust now the propellant that is being inside the case has to support the same acceleration without rupture or significant distortion and also has to transfer the combustion pressure to the casing to maintain its integrity. Now the development of large boosters depends to some extent on the physical strength of the propellant because as we are extending the length of the propeller we are supposed to make sure that upon joining them together they are supposed to maintain the same adhesiveness overall during the flight until unless their complete combustion or complete burn happens now as we are adding multiple amounts of additives 
Plasticizers in order to next in order to solve to my fuel plus oxidizer mixture. Right now, what I plan to do is this will be my propellant mixture that I will be using in solid combustion chamber. Now, what happens during this? Basically. Addition of these will create some toxic fumes, right? Few chemicals or few propellants that we use, or in terms of additives or else metal oxides, will tend to relieve toxic fumes upon burning. Now, the launch vehicle boosters that are fired close to ground, and most of the exhaust is dispersed over a wide area of the launch site, while the product of liquid ingests are mostly harmless. The chlorine in the oxidant of solid boosters produces hydrogen chloride also and particulates that are formed during this can also be dangerous. Thus, it is important that during the lift off, the booster exhaust is channeled away safely or water cooled in an open duct because once the rocket is in flight, it is beyond our control and the dilution of exhaust products by the atmosphere as the fall has to be relied upon. The overall thrust profile can be controlled by the shape of the charge, but other factors are important in understanding a way of solid rocket motor performs, the most of which is the stability of the thrust. In the liquid fuel engine, the chamber pressure is usually constant and with the mass flow rate and is determined by the rate at which the propellants are delivered through the injectors. Now coming to our topic that is thrust stability, the solid rocket motor, the mass flow rate is not determined by the external supply because whatever the fuel we are putting in a casing that will be fixed. Upon exhaustion there is no refill once it is it's been discarded but by the rate at which the surface of the burning, right, the surface of the burning charge is consumed which is itself is a function of pressure in the combustion chamber. Because of this peculiarity, the solid propellant systems, the rate of supply of combustible propellant increases with pressure and the stable burning is not necessarily given. Now, let us understand this a bit. In uh, simple uh, liquid rocket propellant motors for combustion chamber, the rate at which we give fuel and oxidizer will give determine the combustion chamber pressure as well as the velocity of the vehicle right now coming to our solid rocket motor propellant base we are combining fuel plus oxidizer right now upon burning whatever or wherever they are burning they form themselves the combustion chamber right now the pressure of this combustion chamber is determined by the rate at which this mixture burns, right? The rate at which the mixture burns. So, based on that, we will be determining the combustion rate or the pressure of a combustion chamber. Now, if you arbitrary, let us assume that the rate of consumption of grain is dependent upon the mass that is AP beta, then the value of beta that is the pressure controls the stability, which is as follows. We see that the mass flow rate out of the chamber depends linearly on the pressure. So, as the mass flow rate increases, the pressure also increases. Thus, if beta is greater than 1, the supply of gas from burning grain increases faster with pressure than the rate of the exhaust and an uncontrolled rise in burning rate. The pressure could result from a smaller initial increase. Similarly, a small in initial inc decrease in pressure could result in a catastrophic drop in burning rate. Particularly, homemade rockets tend to exhibit one or the other these distressing tendencies. If, on the other hand, if beta is less than 1, the rate of change of burning rate is always less than the linear rate of the change of mass flow rate through the exhaust. 
the pressure in the combustion chamber will stabilize any positive or negative change of the burning rate. This problem does not occur with liquid propellant because its primary consideration in the design of solid mo motor and in grain composition and configuration. Some additives are used to achieve this correct dependency where this does not arise naturally. Typical values of beta ranges from 0.4 to 7. The rate of burning of propellant is expressed as a linear recession rate of burning surface depends on the rate of heat supply to the surface from the hot gas. This heat evaporates the propellant. Let us understand a burning process of my solid propellant so that we can understand this sentence more clearly. Right? Mm -hmm. What happens during burn? For example, let us take a simple area, wet cloth. Right? What happens during the wet cloth? As soon as it's a damp well, as soon as we spread the surface area, right? As soon as we spread the surface area, the area increases, which in turn opens up the surface area for evaporation. Right? Now, how does the evaporation take place? By heat. Which heat? Particularly surrounding heat. If you are putting a cloth, wet cloth in a high humid environment, you will not be able to dry it off quickly. But if you are putting it in, if putting the same cloth in a dry environment with less water, the same cloth will be dried out in few seconds. Now, based on the same principle, what happens? This is my case for solid rocket problem water atmosphere. Binder propellant, and this is my area that is available or exposed to my combustion. Now, what happens as soon as you ignite a solid combustion booster, the top surface tends to burn, right? Now, as soon as the top surface tends to burn, the bottom surface will tend to liquefy, right, from your solid state, solid to liquid, right, that is again based on the temperature at which the upper surface is burning and the pressure at which it is burning, all these are relevant to determine the rate at which the propellant is consumed, right, now, Coming to our statement, the rate of burning of propellant, which is expressed as the linear recession or the linear decrease rate of the burning surface, which again depends on the rate of heat supply to the surface in order to liquefy from the hot gas or from the combustion gases. Now, the same heat which evaporates the propellant from solid to liquid. Upon liquid, it tends to again evaporate to gaseous form to burn. Now, the recession rate should also be constant under constant pressure condition. That is, beta is less than 1. If there is also another effect which can change the rate at which the surface recedes, also called as erosive burning, which occurs because of the velocity of gas over the surface. With the liquid fuel engine, it is a fair assumption that the velocity of gas in the combustion chamber is small as well as the constant. It is finite because the gas has to leave the chamber. And because of the length of the solid propellant combustion chamber and the gas accelerate down to the void, the velocity near the nozzle can quite be large. Right? For example, this is my length of my solid rocket motor and this is my nozzle part or throat nozzle igniter now let us understand the reservoir what happens during the reservoir this is my 
solid propellant base. My upper surface is burning, which pushes the gas out towards the nozzle. Now, in my case, what happens as the gas that is preceding, not at the initial, later on level, after a certain length, let's say x, the gas that is coming from behind, right, or towards the from the igniter side, this tends to erode, erode the surface of the propellant, right? Which means whatever the liquid, liquid liquefied uh, propellant is available to us, that tends to move away from the solid surface. So, due to the velocity of gases that is nearer, as we know, simple velocity profile, boundary condition, the velocity is very near, nearer to a surface is highest rather than compared to at the center of my nozzle or a void. In the same way, they tend to move faster from the surface of my propellant surface rather than from the center. So, they tend to burn excessively, right? And these conditions of burning at the upper as well as the lower portion of the charge are then different. At the top, the hot gas is fairly stagnant, while near the bottom, it is moving fast and constantly supplying energy to the burning surface. This results in the faster evaporation and a faster recession rate near the nozzle. If it is not checked or allowed for, then the charge can burn through the nozzle end before the upper portion is exhausted. This may lead to the failure of the casing or an unforeseen decrease in thrust, neither of which is pleasant. Paradoxically, it is ameliorated by designing a hollow void within the grain to have an increasing cross section area towards the nozzle. For partial flow rates, the increased cross section requires a corresponding decrease in velocity and in this way it affects the erosive burning and they are counterbalanced. Now coming to a thrust profile and a grain shape, the profile or the pressure in the chamber and hence the thrust depends on which the grain is consumed or the rate at which the grain is being consumed or burned. The pressure that depends on the recession rate and on the area of the burning surface and the mass flow rate which depends on the volume of propellant being consumed per second. The shape of the charge can be used to preset the way and the area of the burning surface evolves with time and hence the temporal thrust profile of the motor. The pressure and the thrust are independent of the increase in chamber volume as the charge burns away and depend only on the recession rate and the area of burning surface. The simplest thrust profile comes from a linear burning of a cylindrical grain as a cigarette. A constant burning area produces constant thrust. This shape however has its own disadvantages that is the burning area is limited to the cylindrical cross section and the burning rim would be in contact with the wall of the motor. Active cooling of the wall is of course not possible with a solid rocket motor and this type of charge shape can be only used with low thrust and for a short duration because thermal damage to the casing and the most popular configuration involves a charge in a form of hollow cylinder as well as which burns on its inner surface. It has two practical advantages that is the area of the burning surface can be much larger producing higher thrust initially and unburned grain insulates the motor as well as wall from the hot gases. In case of hollow, simple hollow cylinder, the area of burning surface increases with time as do with the pressure as well as thrust and this if a caution thrust is desired the inner cross section of a grain should be formed like a cog or the teeth of the teeth which penetrate the pathway into the outer surface as well as the inner surface. And the area of burning is thus initially higher 
and evolving the surface profile corresponding roughly with a constant area and hence constant thrust. Other shapes for the drain produce different thrust profiles depending on the design. Let us see this. The figure shows the cross section of the grains in which first one is nothing but my hollow cylinder. The section shown to us, particularly A, B, C, D, are the cross sectional area of solid rocket propeller motor in what way the uh, the grain should be paid, had from the section A. Now, what happens to this? The darker area is my casing, the grayish area is my propellant, and my hollow area is simply my void through which the gases are ex expelled out towards the nozzle. Right? The same thing follows. Now, what happens to doing this is initially when you ignite the burn, it will be burning along the circular surface of my propellant and it tends to move towards the casing. Right? So what happens in this? Basically, initially, the thrust that is being generated is less, but gradually over a period of time, the thrust increases. Thrust increases, giving high amount of gases. Right now, coming to B, what happens? Rather than B, let's go for C first. What happens to in this? In this case, in this case, you are giving a small amount of void for burning all the gases to be. No, in this case, the gases tends to burn or the initial ignition will happen along the surface that is being marked as red and will expand out. Right, as well as in. Right, initially the thrust will be somewhat higher compared to my hollow cylinder. But later on, it is again less at the end, or it can be high, more higher than compared to or similar to my hollow cylinder. But what is the advantage between among A and as well as C is sorry, major disadvantage is as the burning surface extends outwards, they tend to burn themselves to the casing. Right? If in case there is any manufacturing defect or the propellant tends to burn uh, with instability at the end of the casing, the casing might rupture, giving us the failure of my solid rocket propellant motor. So, in order to avoid this, what we are doing? We are increasing the surface area, right? Increasing the burning surface area to get my high initial thrust with reducing this case burning. So, for that what we are doing? We are putting few gear shaped or cog shaped surfaces for burning. Now what happens during this? They tend to burn inside out similar to my hollow one but initially the thrust will be high compared to both A as well as C then they tend to gradually reduce themselves to low thrust at the end. Now, in this what happens, the burning rate, the burning rate is being more efficiently controlled compared to A as well as C. Now, going for again D, what happens? The burning rate is similar to B as well as D. Initially high thrust and gradually low thrust. In this, as there is more void, 
right? The thrust generated over a span is less. Now, it is common in large boosters to mix profiles. And for example, the forward segment, which may have star as well or cock profile, while the aft segments or the behind segments may have circular profile. In this way, the thrust profile can be fine-tuned. It is also common to have at least one segment with a tapered profile to ameliorate erosive burning and to modify the thrust profile. The thrust profile associated with the shapes in the figure can be understood from simple geometric arguments. That is, the recession rate is assumed to be constant over the whole exposed area, which is in the diagram may be assumed to be proportional to the length of the perimeter of the burning surface. Type A, that is called progressive burn. It is simplest to understand. What happens during this? The circumference of the circular cross section increases linearly with time. And so does the area of the burning surface and there is a linear increase in mass flow risk, hence the thrust, right? For progressive, right? Now, the cross section increases as the time progresses cross section increases which in turn increases the surface area right which in turn increases the mass flow rate right mass flow rate of the gases that are being ex expelled out which again in increases the thrust right it's called a progressive burn now coming to b which is perhaps most commonly used which produces a quasi constant thrust because the initial burning area is quite large due to the convolutions of the cock shape as the cock teeth. Now, as the cock teeth burn away, the loss of the burning area is compensated by increasing the area of my cylindrical part because this profile is simple to cast and is effective in producing the constant mass flow rate. Right? Type C produces a perfectly flat thrust profile because burning takes place both outer as well as the inner rod and on the inner surface as well as on the outer cylinder. The decrease in burning rate of the outer surface and the rod is exactly compensated by increasing the burning area on the inner surface of the cylinder. This type of grain profile is difficult to manufacture and sustain because the need to support the rod through the hot gas stream and it is not used in space vehicles. The final example, particularly in D, which shows an exotic profile that can be used to tailor the thrust profile for a particular purpose. Narrow fins of propellant are initially produced a very high surface area. So the initially the thrust will be very high and once they are burned away, then a low and slowly increasing thrust is produced by a cylindrical section. When the diameter of the burning cross section is large, the area changes more slowly than its initial stages. Such a profile may be used for strong acceleration followed by a sustained flight. The ambient temperature has a significant effect on the rate of burning and hence the thrust profile. At first, it may seem surprising that the that this has not risen for liquid rocket fuel engine. However, they are much less sensitive to ambient temperature because the temperature of the propellant and the supply rate are determined by the condition of the combustion chamber that we feed, not about with respect to the outside effects. But for solid propellant, that's not the case. The rate of evaporation of combustible material from the burning surface of the grain that depends on the rate at which the material gets heated up. This depends both on the rate of supply of heat from the combustion as well as on the temperature of the grain itself. If it is cold, then the more heat has to be supplied to maintain the evaporation point of the propellant, particularly combustion as well as fuel. And if the grain is massive, then it is itself a good insulator, which means that during the waiting time of the launch pad or in space, it can slowly take up the temperature of its surroundings or the temperature that is being present inside the 
void. This will not change appreciably over a short time. The burn because the large heat capacity of the mass has its good insulating properties. The burning rate therefore will shift depending on the temperature of the grain and the variation as much as the factor between minus 15 degrees to 20 degrees centigrade are reported. This affects the thrust profile which could be a serious matter. It appears that the same factor which affects the pressure sensitivity denoted by beta in the pressure index also affects the temperature dependence. A small value of beta are beneficial in beneficial here and specific additives can also reduce the temperature effect. Even so, solid motor should not be used outside the specified temperature limits particularly for launches for which predictable thrust profile is very important. For orbital maneuvers, the ultimate velocity of the vehicle depends on the exhaust velocity and the mass ratio, not the thrust profile. Right? In the next class, we will be continuing for our upcoming solid rocket propeller motor. We will be seeing the thrust profile in detail, then continuing on to the characters of solid rocket propeller motors. Right? Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.